Hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you. And thank you for taking the time to join us for this webinar. Today, we will introduce banking automation in NetSuite, exploring why bank connectivity is an important topic for businesses, including how to download statements and send payments with Zone and Co and Access Pay. My name is Mathieu Lea. I'm a sales representative at Zone Co, covering the EMEA region. I've been involved in the NetSuite ecosystem for two years and a half, and I'm glad to have you all today. I'll be host, so running through the slides, the session is meant to be as interactive as possible, so feel free to pop your questions in the chat during the 45 minutes we have together, and our team will answer them. Thank you, Matthew. And I'm Anita. I'm a product owner here at Zone. I have the product team in creating and maintaining the product backlog, and I work closely with the development and delivery team. Good morning. Thank you, Anita. Mateo, my name is Tom Lovick from Access Pay. I'm the head of enterprise sales responsible for our larger customers such as ITV, Primark and Standard Life. I'm also responsible for the relationship between Zone and Access Pay. Really excited about this webinar. I think this is a world first where we do a live demonstration of how simple it is to connect NetSuite to your banks using Zone and Access Pay. Nav. Hi guys, I'm Nav. I sit in the pre-sales team here at Access Pay. Um, so I support Tom and the rest of the team with the more technical aspects of the project and assist with product, product demonstrations too. Um, and just to kind of echo what Tom said there, I'm really looking forward to combining our efforts and showing you guys a live um, and automated payment cycle. Thanks everyone. So regarding today's agenda, we'll first give you some background around Zoning Co as an organization, then around Access Pay. We'll then go through the bank connectivity topic and clarify what this actually means for organizations using NetSuite. We'll then hand it over to Anita and Nav for the demo, after which we'll have a Q&A session. So as mentioned, our team is ready to ask this, so feel free to ask anything in the chat. Now, regarding Zone & Co as an organization. Zone & Co was founded with a mission to make life easier for finance teams by developing groundbreaking cloud software exclusively on the Oracle NetSuite platform. As an organization, we are a registered SDN partner with employees around the globe uh, who live and breathe NetSuite, and our apps are designed to automate critical processes for NetSuite users. Our final goal is to enhance the NetSuite experience of our customers. Now you can see the list of our zone apps built to reduce manual processes in NetSuite, so we have zone billing to handle any type of billing requirements, zone approvals to build complex approval workflows easily, zone capture, our AP automation tool with OCR functionality and much more, zone reconcile to automate the reconciliation for AP and AR transactions within one screen, zone payments or bidirectional integration with your payment providers such as Stripe, zone reporting, our pre-built Power BI reporting solution, and zone SFTP connector to transfer information from a server to NetSuite and vice versa. I will now leave Tom to tell you about Access Pay. Thanks, Matteo. So Access Pay was founded in 2012, backed by Silicon Valley investors with a vision to put corporate payments in the cloud and connect our corporate customers to their back office systems um, and, and to their banks for both payment processing and statement collection. In those days, offering payments in the cloud was not something that had ever been considered. And we really are payment trailblazers with the first cloud-based back service in 2012 for UK payments. And in 2014, the first UK service for Swift connectivity, which provides global connection. That innovation continues today with a single application for any, pay any payment type in any country. Access Pay as a SaaS company is very focused on our customer satisfaction. And one of our key differentiators is that we publish our customer satisfaction scores with our customer onboarding score of 5.0 out of five and five stars for excel excellence. In addition, for our in-life service, we use Net Promoter and we have a Net Promoter score of plus 33, which is somewhere between very good and excellent. This is backed up by our customer, really high customer retention rate of over 98%. We've got over a thousand customers ranging from SMEs to large corporates, and the platform is processing over 1 trillion US dollars per year, 
made up of about 500 million individual transactions. So it's a large scale platform. The solution is global and using the SWIFT network, we can connect to over 11,000 banks. So why do customers, why do corporates use, why do customers use Access Pay? Um, well, they're using Access Pay because typically they're connecting uh, to their banks using man manual portals, so bank portals or, or manual processes. And the key point is that uh, back office systems like, like NetSuite don't connect to those banks. And the reverse is also true, that most banks won't connect directly to NetSuite. So that means that it isn't a plug and play solution. Corporates are using bank portals as a manual process to be able to connect. The issue with bank portals is that they're inefficient and they use expensive finance resources to upload payment files or download statement data. There are security risk. Um, I could commit the perfect fraud if I wanted to by manually changing the bank details of the payment on the way out and then change the statement data coming back to hide the fraud. And finally, we're only human and human errors will, will occur. So access pay customers are more efficient with 90% less time in bank portals. Um, they, this typically forms the business case for most organizations, but the impact of replacing bank portals with automation is really is transformational. Corporates are more secure and have less human error. Automation allows the organization to consider finance transformation projects, such as a global shared service center or a payment factory. Oh, thanks. thanks what are we going to showcase today? Two Zone apps and two applications from Access Pay. Zone Reconcile, to reconcile AP and AR transactions within one screen. Zone SFTP, the connector to transfer data from a server to NetSuite and vice versa. Access Pay has two applications, the unified payments platform for processing any bank-to-bank -bank payments, such as ACH, SEPA, BAX, wires, or intercompany transfers and a cash management application, which allows you to receive statement data automatically from your banks, view the cash positions, and then use that statement data in NetSuite to reconcile the transactions. We're going to demonstrate those applications in a short while. Let's get to that topic. So when it comes to transferring information from your banks, such as bank statements to NetSuite, or when uploading payment files to the banks from NetSuite, we talk about bank connectivity. That is the exchange of banking information from and to NetSuite. And this leads to some challenges, which we'll explain now. And fortunately, thanks to automation, solutions exist. Thanks, Mateo. So there are really are four main challenges with bank connectivity. The first is bank connectivity itself. How do I actually connect my NetSuite system to my bank? What's the physical channel I'm going to use? Well, the answer is it's dependent on the payment type and what your bank offers as corporate connectivity. For most of the usual suspect banks, there are a number of channels, whether it's host to host, API, Swift, EBIX, BAX, um, and, and, there's, and there's more. So Access Pay solves the problem of how do we connect to one bank or multiple banks? Okay, so we now know how to connect to our bank or banks, but what about the file format? The bank might require a specific file format or actually the file to be generated with certain tags or fields enabled. The situation becomes even more difficult if you're using multiple payment types and multiple banks. Access Pay addresses this challenge by accepting one payment format from NetSuite, generating a bank ready file on the way out to the bank. The next topic is security. Everyone knows that bank portals are secure. At least they are secure for you or I as individuals, but as a corporate, as, an, as a customer, you are handling over the key, you're handing over the keys to your bank portals to your employees. And of course, you have improved approvals in place, but what happens if two people are colluding, for example? This could be committing the perfect fraud, being able to amend the payment details on the way out to pay themselves, and then amend the statement data on the way back in. I'm not saying that collusion happens all the time. But do you really want to run that risk in your in your organization? Bank portals are effectively the wrong use case for corporate payments. Automate the process. No employers can touch the, the file on the way out and remove this type of fraud. Finally, the issue of approvals. 
uh, Nav and I hear a lot of customers saying that their approvals are happening in their bank portals. And one of the reasons why they can't automate is where do they uh, add that approval process if they're not um, carrying out the approval in the bank portal? Well, if that's the case, then, then access, we actually have a very simple solution. The approval process happens in Access Pay before the file is released to the bank. The approval process in Access Pay is very straightforward, and Nav's going to demonstrate this shortly. It's literally a click, and the whole process is recorded for audit purposes. Automation is more than just replacing bank portals. We've actually seen customers taking automation to the next level, and as I mentioned earlier, driving finance transform transformation in the business. Great. Now, maybe, Tom, we can see two typical use cases, right, of bank connectivity without bank portals using a mix of Zone Co and Access Pay. Um, first example, I'm a NetSuite customer. I want to connect my NetSuite system to my bank to receive statement data and then carry out the reconciliation in NetSuite. How can I do that? So looking at the slide, if you look at the bottom part of the flow, you can see on the right hand side, it says uh, your suppliers, banks and, and your banks. So for if you think about the statement data, this, that statement data is being generated by your bank. Access Pay is going to connect to the bank automatically. And as I mentioned just before, we've got a few different channels that allows us to do that, whether it's Swift or host to host or, or API. That statement file is going to come into Access Pay automatically. And then you can see uh, the first step of that process is that dashboard and drill down. So you're able to see your dashboard of all your statement data. So irrespective of how many banks might be connecting to the dashboard to see all the statement information, your cash position across all banks uh, and all bank accounts. And then the user is able to drill down from that high level position all the way down to um, the transaction level uh, for that statement information. The final part of the process is we take the file and if, if needed, we can transform the file from the, the bank generated format to a different format, for example, to a CSV file if it's required. For Oracle and for NetSuite, um, we can send that over a, a, the 940 as it's been generated by the bank for most banks. Zone & Co will provide the connection back into NetSuite and that statement data is then fed in for reconciliation purposes. Great. Um... Now, if we think about supply payments, let's say I want to make a supply payment out of NetSuite, do I have a solution for that too? Yes, yeah, so supply payments and actually not just supply payments, there are a number of other payment types as well, such as payroll um, or even direct debit collections. Um, we're able to uh, take the file from NetSuite and um, Zone will connect NetSuite to Access Pay like we did on the statement side. And then we go through a process inside Access Pay, as you can see here. The first step is to validate the bank details. So BIC and IBAN or sort code and account number. The next step is a secure security and control process, which Nav again is going to demonstrate. You'll, you'll see that in the, in the application. And then the final part is we transform the file into the format that's required by the bank. So Access Pay is solving two problems, really, uh, two key problems. The first one for on the payment side is generating the file in the right format. And then the secondly is, how do I actually deliver that file once it's in the right format to deliver it to the bank? And we provide that bank connectivity as well. So the output of Access Pay, as you can see here, is a bank ready payment file, which your bank would then collect. Um, and then they would then process that and the payment will then be delivered uh, to your suppliers uh, as, a, as, a, as a bank to bank transaction. Great. Well, thanks, Tom, for, for this explanation. Um, now, let's see what this actually looks like. I'll be handing over to Anita and Nav for the demonstration. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. We'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for the great introduction. Um, I'm now very happy to walk you through the connectivity setup. Um, at this moment, uh, I expect you can see my NetSuite dashboard. If that is not the case, just simply please let me know. So in order to proceed with the uh, connection configuration, there are two prerequisites that have to be met. The very first one is we have to have the asset tree bundle already installed into our NetSuite instance. And the second one is that the asset tree provider, in our case, Access Pay, has already have to share the connectivity credentials with us. When these conditions are met, we're, proceed, uh, we're ready to proceed with the setup. 
Now, at this very moment, please know that I'm logged in using the administrator rule, and indeed this rule is a preferred one when uh, considering the setup that is about to follow. Just to simply verify that the bundle is successfully installed, we would be having one additional menu option under setup. So in our case, that would be the SFTP connector and the connection configuration is the very first step uh, that we need to take into consideration. Practically, the connection configuration is hosting the credential details and is verifying whether our connection is successfully established or not. When considering the connection configuration, there are two settings we need to take into consideration. The very first one are the credential settings and which are mandatory settings. And the second one are the PGP encryption settings, which are indeed optional. Now, a connection in Nesbit can be established using a username and a key pair or a username and a password. Uh, the preferred option indeed uh, depends on the internal business security policies. And even more, if these policies practically do require an increased uh, security uh, when considering the transmission of files between Nesbit and a dedicated remote server, an administrator or practically an end user can introduce PGP encryption. PGP encryption practically stands for creating PGP key pairs outside of NetSuite. The public key uh, can be shared with a third party while the private key should be stored securely, um, securely in NetSuite. Um, when our connection is practically successfully established, we would be having a, a banner in this manner at the, at the very top. Um, and afterwards, we are ready to proceed with our actions. Now, when considering the connectivity, uh, connectivity options, as well as mentioned previously, there are two, uh, two options that we can uh, push and pull uh, data. And for these purposes, we do configure an upload action configuration or a download one. Very briefly, we will demonstrate the upload action configuration and uh, by its means, we will be presenting sending a payment file from Nesbit to Access Space Server. The upload action configuration is very simple. Uh, we'll have to uh, provide a name for our connection, uh, pre-select pre the, uh, the connection itself. Of course, we'll have to state the directory towards which uh, our files are going to be directed, and then the file source. So at this moment, as said, we'll be uh, demonstrating sending a payment file from the payment file administration of NetSuite, practically the payments module. There's also one additional possibility to simply um, perform an upload of files stored in the file cabinet to the dedicated remote server. Again, this option is uh, entirely optional, but an end user, um, again, can choose to either encrypt, sign uh, when, uh, a payment file when considering the PGP options, uh, but yeah, multiple, multiple flavors are possible. To proceed with the actual demonstration of the payment file, we'll navigate to the payments module of NetSuite, that would be payments, payment processing, and the payment file administration. In our scenario, um, we will be sending payment number 20. At this moment, please note from an end user perspective, this step is very, very simple. An end user will have to only press the button upload EFT patch, and in this manner, the payment uh, will be transmitted to, to the dedicated remote server. Now we'll proceed with this, uh, with this option. One more item to mention uh, is that uh, besides the upload action configuration, there is also a workflow responsible for this transmission uh, option. And during implementations, we practically create a very simple workflow uh, with uh, users, but we do encourage them to use the full capabilities of NetSuite in terms of payment validation or permissions, uh, permission access. So as an example, the upload um, patch button or the re-upload patch can be practically uh, limited to particular users. As an example, a user holding, uh, holding a role of the um, AP clerk or practically an, uh, an administrator. And also one additional item, as simply said previously, uh, using Access Pay as an intermediary to practically process uh, payments fully eliminates the need to um, create a template file inside Nesbit. So practically an end user or an administrator can, uh, can generate a payment file using the, the templates inside Nesbit and uh, access pay on their end are going to manipulate it to practically meet the bank requirements. This very moment, I'm going to hand over to Nev to, uh, to simply showcase the, the payment received. Thanks, Anita. I'm just gonna share my screen. Well, 
So yeah, great. Thank, thanks for that, Anita. So now that the payment file has been delivered to Access Pay, um, within Access Pay, I can set up an email notification to alert me that there is a payment file waiting to be processed. So I'm here at the login page of Access Pay's payment platform, also known as UPP, which stands for Unified Payments Platform. So what I'll do now is I'll log in using my own user credentials. This will then take me to the submissions page of UPP. I can then filter to see what's come in today. And great, so I can see um, a file came in um, a minute ago, which was sent by Anita with one transaction in, and the file is at a status ready to approve. So whichever user has um, approval user permissions can come into here and hit this red button here. This will then take me to, to, to this page where I can see um, the file journey has begun. So you can see in the background, the file has been imported, routed and validated. And of course, we can add these as manual steps to your workflow um, if you want to as well. If we scroll a little bit further down, I can see there's one transaction um, within that file. Um, it's got an amount of 14,520 euros and you can see the source and destination there as well. If everything looks okay and I'm happy to kind of send this payment instruction off to the bank, what I can do is leave a little comment here in the comment section saying looks good. And this will be logged for audit purposes as well. And then all I have to do is hit approve and this payment instruction will get sent directly to the bank. And it's really as simple as that. Um, it's, it's really important to remember that access pay is, is completely configurable. So of course you can add additional levels of approval within this workflow, or you can go the other way and have a complete lights out straight through process if you wanted to. So I'm sure kind of what you're thinking, um, you know, what, what you've seen is, is very, very simple and straightforward. And it, and it certainly is for a user, but there's a lot going on underneath the bonnet. So once Access Pay receive the payment files and um, we carry out enrichment of the file, validation and transform the file into a bank ready file format and basically take all that stress away um, stress and IT resource away from the client. So you can kind of think of it a bit like an iPhone. You know, you have your phone, you put your pin code in, you head to the camera to take a photo or you go to Instagram to check your Instagram. It's super user-friendly, but there's a lot of complex technology going on behind the scenes to make it user-friendly. And that's very similar to Access Pay. Um, and just to kind of give you a real life example, we have a large client um, banking with Nordea. The file formats that the Nordic banks require are very specific. So prior to Access Pay, this client had file format and connectivity issues. Um, but then using Access Pay, we handled the, the file transformation piece. So the file would be accepted by Nordea. Um, and of course, work with Nordea to build that direct connection to the bank, adhering to all those security protocols um, set by Nordea. Um, so kind of going back to this, um, this file journey, which, which, which we were on before, um, so the payment instruction has now been delivered to the bank um, and the money will be exchanged. But as Tom explained earlier, here at Access Pay, we have a, a cash visibility tool to complete that full cycle. Um, so we know most treasurers are, are currently manually logging into their banking portals each day, downloading their end of day bank statements and sticking those into some sort of internally managed spreadsheet to work out balances um, or maybe sticking those statements into some sort of reconciliation tool. However, with Access Pay, we can help automate those processes and we will instruct your banks to send your end of day or intraday statements and we can convert those statements into a format your ERP or reconciliation tool will, will consume um, and slash or <laughs> deliver those statements back to you. Um, or, or we can kind of show that within our cash management tool, um, which I'm going to show you now as well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll head to our cash management platform, which hopefully you can see. Um, we're in the admin page here. If I go to statements upload, and what I'm going to do is manually upload a statement. Um, and just to, just to note, you don't have to do this. The, the kind of the, the statement delivery will be automated from your banks into Access Pay. But just for um, demo purposes, I'm going to up manually upload an end of day statement. So if we do that and upload a file for yesterday. We've got an end of day statement there. Hit upload. Great, you can see it's been a success. Um, within the cash management platform, you'll see lots of tabs at the top. So there's lots of functionality which you can utilize. If we jump into balances, 
this is kind of the primary page to see your, your balances. So at the moment, we're showing it on a currency level. And you can hover over and see your balances. You can also flick into um, to see this on a, on a bank level as well. And to see your show, to see your balances, all you have to do is click this drop down button here and you can basically see your opening balance, your current balance and a forecasted balance if you wish to upload one. Um, now we're showing your balances across all your um, all your banks at the moment. But if you can see the filter button there, you can get quite granular and you can filter by currency, bank account, legal entity, um, tags. So we have a tagging feature so you can group together similar accounts um, and assign them a tag. And then you can use those tags um, for reporting purposes or if you want to see the, the, the balance across those particular accounts, you can use it here as well. Um, and a lot of clients come to us and will have deposit accounts or investments accounts. And this is a, kind of a great use case um, for, for, for the tags. If we jump into statements, um, statements you know, does exactly what it says on the tin. We've got um, your bank accounts, which are set up here. Again, if I jump into Barclays, I can see I've got five accounts within Barclays. If I go onto Nav's Barclays account, I can see the most recent statement data, which has fed into my particular account. So I can see um, on the 22nd of May, there was a statement with five transactions, and that's the one that I just uploaded a bit earlier on. If I click into that, I can see um, some account details and then the ins and outs, the debits and credits. Um, from here, I can download the statement information into a CSV or into a PDF as well. So if I just click on the PDF, Hopefully you should be able to see this. That spits out a, a nice PDF um, of your statement as well. Great. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we can also deliver statements directly back to the client to be consumed by, by your ERP or reconciliation tool, um, as well as showing it here within our cash management tool. So I actually scheduled a statement to be delivered back to NetSuite before the call. So that statement should now have landed back in NetSuite so a full reconciliation can take place. Um, so I'll pass it back um, to Anita now. Thank you very much, Nav. Um, so at this moment, we are again uh, back to uh, NetSuite, uh, and in this walkthrough, we'll be showcasing the pool operation, practically pulling statements from the access space server, uh, store them in the file cabinet, and also auto process them for reconciliation. The configuration responsible for this operation uh, is practically the download action configuration. And when considering the download action configuration, please note the setup is much more even simpler uh, because there are no workflows that are practically running behind scenes. Um, again, very briefly, we do provide uh, a name for our configuration. We'll pre-select the connection. And then of course, we state the directory from which we will be pulling statements inside NetSuite. As well, under the section remote files, you can notice that we do expose all the files that are now available on the access space server to practically be downloaded uh, in NetSuite. Under the naming pattern, I have pre-selected um, a user preference. We can call it that way, so that we can only download one file that holds a particular naming convention. That means that practically, if I do have a file on the remote server holding this name, NetSuite will only download uh, this particular file, and that is the uh, file at the very top of our uh, backlog displayed in red. Moreover, these statements are going to be uh, stored into a particular folder in the file cabinet. Uh, we'll get to the file cabinet setup in a, in a moment. And just very briefly to mention, we can as well initiate a remote action for the downloaded file, meaning that we can either delete the remote file or simply move it to a different directory. At this very moment, uh, before we proceed to the file cabinet, I will press the button download file so that practically our statement file can be successfully downloaded. Moving to the file cabinet. Please note that for this operation to be successfully uh, uh, processed, uh, two, file, uh, two folders are needed and practically these folders do have to be on the very same level. We do have an unprocessed folder and a processed one. The reason for this uh, process is just because there are two scripts that are practically responsible to auto-process the bank statements. The very first one is practically moving the file from the unprocessed to the process folder. And in this operation, uh, the system is practically parsing the file, meaning it is connecting the bank statement data with the correct bank GL account of NetSuite. 
in once the statement is part, parsed, the very last script is practically converting the payment file into an actual statement. Now, the idea of the unprocessed folder is to always be empty, meaning that it will be awaiting for new paying statements uh, coming in in the, in the morning. So when our operation is completed, we can now go ahead and open the unprocessed folder and you can notice that our file has been already downloaded. When the first script is actually performed, the system practically creates an auto input record, which at this moment hasn't been processed yet. So we'll now go ahead and, uh, and uh, perform the auto processing operation. But before we, we do this, I would like to introduce you to one additional menu, um, and that is menu under transactions, and then bank reconciliation, which practically stands for the zone reconcile application. With this application, we can practically uh, reconcile bank statements incoming from the, from the file cabinet. For a moment, I'll open the statements to process in a, uh, in a separate uh, tab. We can notice that in this list, we have 96 records in total, and we will be now uh, performing the, the execution and practically auto-posting the statement. We we'll hit save and execute, um, and just simply await our results. At this very moment, you can notice that these steps are pretty manual, uh, downloading the statements, parsing the statements, as well as auto-processing the statements from the file cabinet. But please know that this is indeed the preferred option when considering the testing cycle. Uh, in a real life scenario, especially the production in instances, uh, the scripts can be scheduled and all these operations are practically going to be, uh, to be flow as, um, as expected. From an end user perspective, indeed, an end user will have to navigate to transactions, bank reconciliation, and statements to process. Our list is already here. We will only wait by the time the script is, um, the script is executed. There is actually a difference uh, between the two menus of bank statement list and bank statements to process. Uh, practically, the bank statement list is storing a list of all previously imported statements, so practically acts as a repository of, of historical statements. In the statement to process list, this list ideally should be empty, so that would mean that the users have reconciled all the, all the pending open banking statements. When the process is completed, we'll go ahead and reload the page. We would be uh, expecting our bank statement coming in, which is practically true in, in our case. We can notice the bank account is successfully uh, stored, but uh, yeah, this is indeed a user preference depending on the chart of accounts of a name user. At this moment, we'll proceed with editing the bank statement, and you can see the, the actual converted statement from a file incoming from the file cabinet. The bank statement is practically parsed into, uh, into two sections. The header section, which is uh, practically displaying data of our bank balances, and uh, the below transactions are practically the movements, the movements of our statement. Before we conclude, I would like to uh, very briefly show the NetSuite uh, dashboard. Um, and at this moment, uh, not only an administrator, each role can configure uh, this uh, dashboard and navigate to personalize, use the custom search as a dashboard. At this moment, we will set it up. Uh, there is a safe search that is responsible for this operation, define things, uh, and the safe search is called the bank statement reconciliation status. Why we are mentioning this? Uh, the reason is just because Whenever an end user has an end-to-end -end connectivity uh, as a server as access pay in this case, regardless of the fact whether statements are reconciled or not, an end user would uh, actually have the statement end balance uh, on a daily level um, automatically and by default. At this very moment, I will stop here and uh, hand over to Matthew. Thanks a lot, Anita, and thanks, Nav. For this demonstration. I just launched a poll for you to bring feedback on the parts of bank connectivity that matters to you and, and your organization. So you see you have three options, uh, payment automation, which is the upload from NetSuite to the bank, bank statements, download from the bank to NetSuite, of both features. Uh, so I'll leave you a bit of time to answer. And I'll share my screen again. Great, I see we already have 
some answers. So it seems like both are equally important to to you for eighty eight percent of you. So quite interesting to see. Thanks for your answer. Feel free to keep answering, but it seems like both uh, both features are important. So great to know. I'll leave you with this slide on the key takeaways. Uh, we will now have a, a bit of time left for a Q&A session. So I see we had uh, quite a lot of questions in the chat. Um, so some were answered already. If we don't have time to cover all of them, uh, we'll follow, follow up um, via email. And uh, maybe one question for Access Pay. We had a few questions regarding the banks supported, right? Um, yes. By, by Access Pay. So uh, regarding the Danish banks or a list of banks that accept the connection. Uh, Tom, uh, would you like to maybe comment further a bit on that? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Matteo. Uh, Nav, please chip in. Um, so it, this it, this is a great question. Obviously, it's a great question. And it's very important. Um, in summary, it depends on whether you're looking to uh, receive the statement data coming back from the bank um, and or payments going out. If I just focus on statement to start with, so we refer to that as a bank feed solution. So effectively getting the statement data from the bank and deliver it back into Zone & Co and back into NetSuite. Um, that's a very easy process to set up, primarily because Access Pay already has uh, or it's already connected onto the SWIFT network. And the, on that network, there are about 11,000 banks. So um, it, it's more a question of whether the bank can deliver the statement data. So that's if we get into the weeds a little bit. So if, if you're familiar with the NT940, that, that's a, an end of day statement. And there's another payment uh, statement type called NT942. Um, and it's whether the bank can deliver that statement data back to um, uh, fr from the, your bank accounts rather than specifically uh, around access pay functionality itself. Uh, now, does that answer the question on the statement side? Okay. Spot on, Tom. Thanks. Okay. So let's move on to payments. So payments is a little bit of a black art, not quite as simple as access pay is already connected onto the SWIFT network. Just send the statement data back to the access pay uh, swift location so on the, on the payment side we will need a connection from the bank uh, in order to deliver the payment file into the bank and there are primarily three possibly four different ways that can happen uh, so either swift host to host uh, api or in the uk via the bax service um, and the, uh, the there are differences depending on, on the payment type that's wanted to be made uh, as well as the bank support as like I mentioned on the statement side, it depends on the bank's capability for supporting uh, these types of payments uh, as a bank to bank transaction. The usual suspect banks, so the likes of HSBC, um, uh, Deutsche Bank uh, 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 and so on, but those those banks um, will offer multiple different types of connectivity. Whereas if you get down to more local banks, then it becomes more difficult uh, or there are less options to connect. And so, for example, one bank may only offer a host to host connection rather than SWIFT and APIs. Uh, so hopefully that answers the question. I appreciate it. it's a generic answer rather than being more specific. There was a, a question specifically about Denmark, and I, I've not seen any issues with connecting to any Den, uh, Danish banks. So uh, I would think that uh, any Danish banks, as long as they offer corporate connectivity, uh, we can connect to them. Now, anything else to add? No, that's spot on. I'm just going to reiterate what, what you said. Obviously, we are access pay. We are bank agnostic. So um, any kind of issues we have seen in the past are, are limitations on, on the bank side rather than the access pay side. As long as the bank can provide, you know, host to host capabilities or like Tom said, uh, you know, on the, on, are on the score list, um, we can connect to them. Um, so, so it shouldn't be. And especially, especially if you're banking with, with, with the big guys, then there should be no issue either there. Yeah, I, I was just going to illustrate one a project recently, um, or about twelve months ago. Um, the customer came to us; an existing customer wanted to connect to Erster Bank, which is um, an Austrian bank, but they wanted to connect to them specifically in Hungary uh, for some Hungarian bank accounts. And, and we we hadn't done that type of connection before. We hadn't connected to to Erster in in Hungary. So. Um, in that case, it's it, it's a process. It's not that we can't connect, 
it's then we develop that connection we work with the the particular bank to develop that connection specifically for that customer but what that what that then means is we can reuse that connection or reuse that um, technology that we've created um, and that the way of connection that the bank is, is requesting um, for other clients um, so even if we haven't connected to a particular bank um, the likelihood is we're going to be able to assuming they offer uh, a level of corporate connectivity Great. well thanks for for these answers some now um, now maybe on zoning co side uh, for you Anita a uh, question regarding the limits in terms of the number of connections we can make with SFTP to access pay on a daily basis. Would you like to comment on this? Yeah, indeed, there is no limitation about how many banks you can connect or uh, how many upload or download configuration there can be. And when it comes to the SFTP connector, can it be used for other purposes than connecting to a bank, for example? Um, we can also connect to, to a personal remote server, um, as well as a provider. Yeah, as we just simply discussed, a provider is access pay, but also a private remote server as well. Okay, good to know. Um, well, thanks for taking these questions. I'll just quickly share the results of the poll. Um, so now you should be able to see them. So it confirms that both aspects are equally important for, for you. So it's really good to see. Um, we're coming to the end of the session. Uh, so we have four minutes left. Um, so before we say goodbye, I would like to, again, thank you all for joining and uh, mentioned that we have more webinars coming this year with Zonenco. So the next one will be on the 15th of June at uh, 11 a.m. CET time. So you have the QR code here. You can register if the topic of electronic invoicing is of interest for you. Uh, we are seeing more and more questions on this. And in this webinar, we will discuss how to bring AP and AI automation to the next level in NetSuite. And um, that's it for today. So remember that we are happy to help um, for the questions that we didn't have time to, to cover today. We'll follow up via email. We will share the recording of the session. Uh, if you need any information on Zone Apps, feel free to reach out to sweetapps at zoningco.com. Any questions around Access Pay, do reach out to Tom at accesspay.com. And uh, thank you all for your participation and looking forward to, to meet you soon. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Matthew.